Good evening. <clears throat> Throughout our history, there have, been th there have been those who helped the Jewish people survive. In antiquity, when we were exiled in Babylon, it was Emperor Cyrus the Great of Persia who conquered Babylonia and bid us to return to our homeland. And in modern times, when the Nazis sought to destroy our people, there were the righteous among the nations who sheltered Jews and saved untold numbers from certain death. But it is only in the last 70 years that there have been friends of the Jewish people who didn't just help us survive, but help us to thrive, to build the Jewish state. During Global Forum, we'll learn a few of those stories in a series we're calling Remembering Heroic Friends of Israel. The first two heroes who were remembered are a pair of diplomats, Ambassador Oswaldo Arana of Brazil and Ambassador Jorge Garcia Granados of Guatemala. In November of 1947, as the British mandate was nearing its end and the United Nations was preparing to vote on the partition plan, Ambassador Garcia Granados of Guatemala, a member of the United Nations Special Committee on Palestine, was busy whipping votes among Latin American countries, urging them to support the creation of the Jewish state. Ambassador Garcia Granados went on to become the first Guatemalan ambassador to Israel in Jerusalem, I might add. Ambassador Arana was serving as president of the UN General Assembly at the end of 1947, and it was he who brought the partition plan to a vote. He also urged his fellow ambassadors to vote yes on the resolution, and to this day, the first country to speak each fall at the UN General Assembly is Brazil in recognition of Ambassador Arana's historic leadership, and in 1948, he was nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize. These two great men helped put Israel on the map quite literally. And again, literally, Israel <coughs> has returned the favor. Among the political, biblical, and literary heroes who mark the streets of Jerusalem, you can find streets named for both ambassadors. Indeed, all across Israel, there are streets and squares named for these leaders and their countries because Israel does not forget her friends. Earlier this year, speaking to AJC, Guatemala's current foreign minister, Sandra Covell, said, and I quote, Guatemala believes in Israel, trusts Israel, and Israel can count on Guatemala as a friend and an ally. Her country soon proved that sentiment by following the United States and moving its embassy here to Jerusalem. Before we show you a brief video, on behalf of AJC, we would like to express our solidarity with the people and government of Guatemala in the wake of the destruction caused by the recent eruption of Volcan Fuego. AJC quickly responded by supporting a vital relief effort through our partners at ISRAID. Now, please turn your attention to the screen as we recall the historic UN General Assembly vote of 1947. You all know how to vote. Those who are in favor will say yes, those who are against will say no. Afghanistan, no. no. Argentina, abstention. Australia, yes. Belgium, yes. Brazil, yes. Belarus, yes. yes. Egypt, no. France, yes. Guatemala, yes. Haiti, yes. United Kingdom, abstain. The United States, yes. The Duck Committee for Palestine was adopted by 33 votes, 13 against, 10 abstentions. Ladies and gentlemen, it is, a, it is a great honor to remember these historic friends of Israel 
not just with over 2,400 of you, but also with Carla Garcia Granados, granddaughter of Ambassador <coughs> uh, Garcia Granados, and Pedro Carrera de Lago, grandson of Ambassador Harana. Please join me in welcoming them, the two to the stage. Good evening. I would like to take just one second to send my thought and prayers to the people of Guatemala who has just passed through a horrific natural disaster. Our thoughts and good wishes are with them. I would like to thank AGC for inviting me to be part of such an important event. We are here celebrating 70 years of the State of Israel and 70 years since the 1947 UN resolution that recommended the partition of Palestine at the end of the British mandate. This resolution opened the gate for the creation of the State of Israel, which was established following the year 1948. I am most honored and happy to be able to represent here my grandfather, Dr. Jorge Garcia Granados, from Guatemala. But I would like also to recognize the important role of other Latin American diplomats during the historic time, like Professor Enrique Rodriguez Fabregat from Uruguay, Dr. Arturo Garcia Salazar from Peru, and Dr. Osvaldo Araña from Brazil. All these men were illustrated men of state, products of the great Latin American liberal tradition that had its origins in the European Enlightenment of the 18th century. We must remember that this movement, which changed the way of thinking in much of the West and promoted tolerance and respect for others, was strongly influenced by Jewish traditions of humanism, respect for ideas, and rule of law, and the treatment of all people of free, equal human beings. Thinkers like Jewish philosopher Baruch de Spinoza, of Spanish-Portuguese Sephardic origin, and French thinkers like Voltaire and Rousseau influenced my grandfather thinking, and he shared many of these ideas with free state Zionist movements. I did not know my grandfather personally. He died before I was born. But I have re read all his papers, both published and unpublished, and come to admire more and more his willingness to fight for causes in which he believed in. These same values my family uphold and were values that I was brought up with. When people learn about my grandfather's involvement in the establishment of the State of Israel, they often ask me two questions. Why did a Latin America man of Catholic background get involved in a Jewish cause? The second question, would he do the same under present circumstances? My answer to first question is, I think that the main reason for his involvement was his identification with culture that cherished humanistic values, a democratic society of the rule of law. My grandfather, Jorge Garcia Granados, fought for these principles for many years in Guatemala. When he met with people from the Jewish agency and saw that they shared the same ideals, he immediately identified with them and adopted the just cause. He was right. Israel has been nearly 70 years in a permanent state of alert and has gone through several wars, but has always tried to respect human rights and enforce the rule of the law. Even in the most difficult moments, these principles and democratic free election of representatives have been paramount. The answer of the second question, would Jorge Garcia Granados has lent the same support to Israel in present circumstance? This question is more difficult to answer. But in his book, The Birth of Israel, he writes, 
that when the UN Commission came to Palestine, they found Jewish community already existing during the mandate, two communities living side by side. He said that it was history to the U and not the UN that created the partition. Things are not very different now. There are two communities, and probably in the future, there will be two states living in probably the future peace side by side. The difference now is that fanatism has permeated political and religious movements all over the world. Bombs make more noise than words. This has made it difficult for moderate people of good faith to have their voice heard. But I think my grandfather would agree with me that people of humanistic modern ideas support the continued existence of the State of Israel in peace. To conclude, my grandfather, Jorge Garcia Granados, supported the creation of Israel because of his sympathy with the values of Jewish founders of Israel, respect, human life, respect of democratic society, respect for the rule of law. I am confident that in another 70 years, our grandchildren will stand here in the same place, celebrating a prosperous Israel that will still be a champion of these values that are crucial for the future of humanity. Thank you, and thank you for reminding that Guatemala moved his embassy to Jerusalem two weeks ago. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I must thank the AVC uh, for this invitation uh, to evoke uh, the important role my grandfather, Oswaldo Aranha of Brazil, played as president of the General Assembly of the UN in November 47 on the, <laughs> on the crucial decision uh, that created uh, an Arab state and a Palestine, uh, an, an is a Jewish state and an Arab state alongside. Without um, this decision, as you know, paved the way for the establishment of the State of Israel in uh, May 1948. Without the strong endorsement that the decision of the UN represented at the time, Ben Gurion and his fellow Arab leaders would not have had the legitimacy to take the remarkable initiative of barely six months later establishing Israel. At the time, there were only 59 nations that were members of the United States, and the partition plan needed at least two-thirds majority to pass. And this, the Jewish leaders knew, was very difficult to obtain. The Arabs had a minority, but a strong minority, and they believed they would be sufficiently solid to block any initiative or any resolution that would create a Jewish state. My grandfather, Oswaldo Aranha, in the words of Abba Eben, was almost re religiously imbued with the necessity of the creation of a, a Jewish state. You know, another president that would be less convinced of the justice of this cause might have led the discussions and the vote in a very different way. Although he had to remain neutral, Oswaldo Aranha played a very strong role in the backstage, convincing Latin American countries, which were an important bloc at the time, to vote alongside. And even this was difficult. At the end, important countries like Argentina or Mexico ended up abstaining. Uh, he was helped in that task by your grandfather, uh, Jorge Garcia Granados, as representative of Guatemala. Oswaldo Aranha, as president of the assembly, had the regimental power uh, that ended up being crucial in a very decisive moment. On November 27th, the date set for the vote, he knew that 
the resolution wouldn't pass. There weren't enough votes. So he arranged with other countries that were also pro-partition so that their representatives would make interminable speeches that afternoon and he would be obliged to postpone the vote. I mean, he would have a justification for doing so. And Nahum Goldman uh, called this a wonderful strategy that really saved us. So uh, he knew also that the following day was Thanksgiving, so there would be two more days to try and convince the remaining votes that were desperately needed for the resolution to pass. And Liberia, uh, the Philippines, and Haiti were convinced during those two very important days. On November 29th, the day the, he had postponed the vote for, he counted the vote, as you saw in that film that just passed as president of the assembly. The vote was broadcast all over the world, and every Jew was next to his radio station following this very closely. Amos Oz was eight at the time, and in one of the most moving pages, sorry, because it is moving, I have ever read, he, he, so, He recalls how next to his parents he would listen to every vote and count them, and at the end, the extraordinary explosion of joy all over the world that followed the vote. And he says that he saw his parents uh, as he had never seen them before and as he would never see them again. Such was the joy of the moment. Uh, <laughs> Aranya was, of course, very pleased. He knew the cause was just. The Arab countries were furious, and they refused to create the Arab state in the boundaries that were uh, determined by the UN resolution. Had a Palestine state been created alongside the Jewish state at that moment, we don't know how history would have evolved. Mahmoud Abbas himself, recognized in 2011 that he, this had been uh, a major uh, uh, mistake that had been made at the time. Oswald Doreen has been honored in Israel with streets, uh, squares, and even woods named after him. I am deeply honored to remember his role tonight. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs>